What's up, family? Yeah, I want to talk to you guys about a couple things. So 2018, I started this after school care program, um, working with middle age or junior high school kids. And um, man, it was rough. I love that age group. That's like the, my favorite group of people to work with. Um, and so, and they have any people in the program at all starting out. And I think like the first day that I, I was going on campus like was it a lunch because they went to they had like two lunches the fifth and sixth graders went to lunch together and then the seventh and eighth graders went to lunch together and nobody really knew me on campus except a couple of the kids and so I would go on lunch and hang out with them play football with the guys and stuff and um, talk to some of the girls, just hanging out, just building a rapport. And so when we finally got the program kicked off, they had like maybe four or five people that joined the program. And it's all volunteer. They didn't have to join it. It was all volunteer. And built the program up that first year, like 10, 12 kids. But we averaged about eight or nine kids that whole year. And that was so frustrating to me. My goal was to have 25 kids. And after the summer, I took time off and I was doing a lot of self reflecting It's like, what the heck and why? You know, just I couldn't understand why I couldn't get the program going to what I know I'm capable of doing. I know what I'm capable of doing, but I couldn't get it going to that level, to that magnitude, like I thought I should be able to. And it was frustrating. And so I'm like doing some serious soul searching, like what the heck, well, you know? And um, I had an epiphany. Elijah, you're running the program like everybody else would run the program. That's not your gift. That's not your talent. You have your own business of you know how to talk to people. You know how to interact with people. You've worked in a prison system. You know how to talk. You know how to build rapport. You know how to reach in and grab a hold of people. Do you. Do you the way that you know how to do you. And stop trying to be everybody else. Two thousand nineteen rolled around. Let me start the program. We have seven kids. I have seven kids coming back from the previous year, from my first year. Start program. School starts in August. We started program. Seven kids right off the bat. And I made a commitment to myself that I was going to just hang out. And what I mean, hang out. I was going to be me, raw, authentic me. And it's weird because people that know me, know, it's like, man, Elijah, you're so strict. You know, you, yeah, you were in the military. Yeah, you worked in the prison system. But you're working with kids. You can't be like that. You, you, you're dealing with young people. You can't be real authoritative. And you can't be this. And you can't be that. So everybody's telling me all this. And I tried not to be that my first year. And I wasn't being me. And so my second year is like, you know what? I'm going to be me. Raw, authentic, uncut, hood, whatever. I'm going to be me. <laughs> and so started the program, seven kids. That was August. By December, there were over 30-something kids. Again, this is all volunteer. Kids don't have to be there. Volunteer. December's over 30 some kids. By February, by March, excuse me, before school shut down, we had over 50 something kids in the program. 
and I'm when I say I'm raw, authentic, I don't talk on YouTube for 15 minutes. YouTube won't let me make a video for 15 minutes right now because I won't put a phone number in there. Um, but um, when I work with the kids, like the videos that I make here, the way I talk here, I'm more passionate with the kids. I'm more, uh, da, 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 you know, I'm just raw. I got their attention and it's like, boom, I'm just dropping bombs on them. And everybody's like, oh, you can't be like that with kids. And we'll do, we'll do it. It's like, no, I'm not trying to hear that stupid stuff. And it's stupid to me because it don't work for me. And so, um, so for like 15 minutes, you know, and it's like, I'm giving them 15. That was like the minimum. It went up to 20, 30 minutes sometimes, my conversations with the kids on a daily basis, five days a week. And it's like, when they came to me, first thing you do is, I make them sit down and write in a gratitude journal. You're going to write four sentences of something that you're grateful for. And you, I'm going to read them. Because you're not going to just blow smoke up my tail. You're not going to just write stupid stuff. You're going to write four legitimate things that you're grateful for. And you're not going to write the same stuff over and over. Because in my mentality, I got to start teaching these kids how to be grateful. I got to start teaching these kids a different perspective than what they're used to. First thing first, you can write gratitude journal. After you write in your gratitude journal, now we're gonna have a heart to heart conversation about whatever I want to talk about, and it's gonna be life skills. It's gonna be life stuff. And so I'm giving a lecture, fifteen minutes, sometimes up to thirty minutes, and then we're gonna play, have fun. And on every Wednesday, they were required to walk around the school campus and we would pick up trash and they used to get mad at me at first and it's like wait a minute this is your school you learn to take some pride in your school you guys make the mess why should the janitor have to be the one to clean it up and i was trying to teach them how to take pride in where they went to school at, take pride in their community And it's crazy because everybody that was telling me that I couldn't be the way that I am with those kids and that nobody was going to want to listen, nobody was going to want to be there, nobody was going to want to join the program because I spoke too long, I was too harsh, I was too brash in my conversation and my interactions with them. And it's crazy because all those people was telling me I couldn't do it that way. I did it that way and the program grew. To the point where I knew all the teachers of the kids. And the kids knew that I knew their teachers and that they acted up in class. And the teachers let me know, we're going to have a conversation. And they weren't going to like what I had to say to them. Um, if they were disrespectful, oh, they were doing push-ups. You couldn't disrespect somebody. You couldn't interrupt somebody's conversation. If somebody was talking, the students weren't allowed to interrupt and just start talking. You couldn't say, yeah, huh, what? Not to an adult. Not around me. That was automatic push-ups. And so I had all of these rules. I gave these harsh life lessons. We built a garden. But we had fun at the same time. And the, and the program blew up. Why am I talking about this? Big deal, right? Because a lot of times I make my videos. And somebody will tell me, man, Elijah, you sound so preachy. And, what do, 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 do. and it's like, okay, cool. And they're like, well, you don't care that you sound preachy? It's like, I don't care that you think that I sound preachy. And they're like, taken back, they're like, you're so rude. And it's like, okay. And they're like, well, you need to change that. It's like, if you don't like it, start making your own YouTube videos. And start sharing knowledge and wisdom and understanding with everybody else. And you can share it the way that you want to share it. But as for me, this is who I am. I love 
listening. Ah, I can't even talk. I love listening to Alan Watts, um, Muji, um, Bill Dyer. I mean, Wayne Dwyer. I've listened to him going back to the 90s on cassette tapes. Um, so many different people that I've listened to, you know, that I've studied. And they're so calm and articulate and, you know, and that's cool for a while. But they ain't from where I'm from. They ain't had the lifestyle I had. They ain't grew up from where I grew up at. And every now and then, I need somebody to get on my level. And what I mean by that, I need somebody to just grab me and shake me like, and keep it 100 with me. Keep it real with me. And all the Wayne Dyer and all those guys are great speakers, great orators and all that. And I have hours and hours of them on, on audio. Sometimes I need somebody just as hood, just as ghetto fabulous, just as street. Like, they from where I'm from. They speak my lingo. I can relate to that. They went through some things that I don't went through. I can, I can, I can relate to that. Okay. I see where they came from. I see how they came up. And if that's how they came up, and I see where they're at now, and I see what they're doing now, it's like, oh, okay. I can relate to that. Don't allow people to put you in a box to tell you that you have to be a certain way in order for you to succeed. Yeah, I understand you have to know your, your audience. First and foremost, I'm making every one of these videos for my ancestors, my kids and my grandkids and all those that are coming after me so that they'll have this knowledge and wisdom and understanding after I'm long gone. And everybody else that's able to watch it and if they're able to learn something from it, cool, so be it. But you can't allow anybody, I don't care who they are, to try to put you in a box and tell you to do it this way, to do it that way. If it's not authentically you, man, let that go. Let it go. I'm going to always be me. I'm going to always speak the way that I speak. I'm a real passionate person. I use a lot of hand motions. That's, that's just who I am. When I worked in the prison system and I went to the women prison system, I couldn't do that because I couldn't use hand motions and I couldn't be, you know, loud and the way that I am because a lot of the women, they were traumatized. They were beat by guys and all these other things. It's like, oh, I can't do this. I can't work with y'all. Because I'm not going to just stand here all stiff and, 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 and not move around and not talk and let my hands go. Because you scared. I'm, you think I'm going to hit you. I, no, I can't do that. Let me go back to the dudes. Know who you are. Know what you bring to the table. Know that everybody's not going to like it. Everybody's not going to embrace it. Everybody's not going to like how you are. Everybody's not going to embrace how you are. To each their own. To each their own. But you have to be true to who you are. First and foremost. But in order for you to be true to who you are, you have to know who you are. You have to know who you are in order to be true to who you are. I love you guys. Peace.